Hey y'all, this is a review for Finance 310 Chapter 7. We're going to go through the textbook problems and look at the formula sheet and hopefully we'll be set for test 2. Let's go. So first we have 7-1, our first problem. I'm going to write down the information we know in red and then we'll solve it in black or blue or another color. But you can pause it to see um, the question and then I'll work it out here. Okay, so we've been told this um, company has bonds that have 23, 23 years remaining till maturity. So that's going to be N equals 23. So 23 years till maturity, then interest is paid annually. So we don't have to do anything different. It's not semi-annual. So we're just going to proceed as normal. They have $1,000 par value. So that's actually going to be our FV on the financial calculator. And so at the end of 23 years, $1,000 is what um, you're going to be given for this bond. Um, next, the coupon interest rate is 9%. So you might be tempted to put that on I for our financial calculator, but you're actually going to multiply 1,000 times 0 0.09. 0 0.09, and that's going to give us 90 for our payments. And those are going to be annually. Um, and then yield to maturity is 11%, so that's going to be our I. What is the bond's current market price? So we're looking for PV. And on our financial calculator, it's going to give us a different number, but that's all right. Um, the two main calculators I like to use for these are um, our TI-84+, Plus and then our HP-12C financial calculator. I'm going to be using this one just because it's quicker. I'm going to show you right now how to get to um, the financial calculator menu on this one. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to turn it on and then we're going to go, um, where is it? Apps, purple. And then we can press one, one again, and there you go. You can see you have your N, your I, your PV. I'm going to be doing the same thing on this calculator, but as you can see, our top row, it just makes it so you don't have to navigate there every time. So Let's put this in. We are gonna go 23 for N. So 23 is N. Then our I, we see 11%. And then our payments is 90. Future value, 1000. And then PV, I'm gonna press it and it's gonna give us a no negative number. Don't be alarmed. Okay, um, to change it out of negative, you can just press CHS. So our answer should be about $834.67. So um, let me get my answer sheet just to make sure we're doing it right. That is correct, awesome. So 834.67 cents. Awesome, that's a great simple one to start with. Okay, next. We have yield to maturity and future price. So I'll let you pause that. Okay, so the information we're given is a bond has a par value of $1,000, so we can keep that. Then our N, let's see this. Our N, we're told um, 12 years to maturity, so that's going to be 12. Then we know 8% annual coupon rate, so as you remember, that's not our I, that's uh, 1,000 times 0.08 equals 80. Okay, um, and we have it selling right now for um, $980. So our PV is going to be 980. And for it to not give us an error in the financial calculator, we're gonna have to put negative. But it's not really I mean, kind of because you're buying it. So the money's going out. But this is just how we're going to input it. And then asking, what is the yield to maturity? Okay. Um, we're going to go to clear your financial calculator menu on this one. We're going to go CLX, FV, and then this FV, the orange, will activate the FIN, which stands for FIN Financial. So then press this, and then it's clear. Okay, so we're going to say 12 for N. 
1,000, future value, um, our payment, 80, um, 980, and then CHS to make it negative, present value, I, that's going to give us, here we go, 8.27%. Let's check. That is correct. Awesome. And then there's a part B to this. So um, assume the yield to maturity re remains constant for the next three years. So this will just be unchanging. What will the price be three years for today? Okay, this is a fun one. All you have to do, a lot of people would be tempted to put N as um, th three here, but in three years, this is asking how long till the bond matures or ends. So in three years, if there's not another three years till it ends, there's nine years, because 12 minus three. So we're gonna put nine. And all you have to do for this one, you can just put um, nine N, and then you can say PV, and this should be our price, but not negative, of course. So our PV should be $983.38. Awesome, that's right. Let's go to three. Okay. This is number three. Okay. Okay. So we're told this corporation has an outstanding bond of $1,000 par value. So right now we know that our FB is $1,000. Then we're told it's semi-annual. So I always like to put semi two. Cool. Um, we're told it's semi-annual, 14 years till maturity. Sorry, one sec. Okay, so N will be 14, at least for now. Okay, and then we have 11% yield to maturity. Um, so I is going to be 11%. Then 8% semi-annual coupon. So 8%. It, right now we're going to say $80, um, because this time it's 0.08, but... We're going to edit that in the set. What is this? Okay. So this problem is just like our, um, the ones we just did, but it's semi-annual. So what does that mean? So for semi-annual, we're going to have to, let me write this in purple. That's fun. We're going to have to multiply our n by 2. And then we're going to have to um, divide our payment by 2 because since you're getting paid twice a year, the annual payment is not changing, but just um, the periodic rate, I think they call it. So divide this by two. And then you're also gonna need to, um, for I, you're also gonna divide that by two. But if you're solving for I, you're gonna multiply it by two. So we're gonna clear a calculator and let's enter those values. So we have 28 for N, then our I, 5.5, our payments are 40, future value 1,000, and this will give us negative, don't worry about it. So um, $788.18, let's see if that's correct, awesome, that's good. Eh, that doesn't look like a 7, $788 and 18 cents. Awesome. Our next problem, and also if it's like um, quarterly, for example, you could just multiply this by four, divide by four, divide by four. It doesn't, you just do it by however many times it occurs in a year. Okay, we're gonna go to four next, so you can pause that, take a picture. There we go. Um, where's my eraser? Sorry, I know this is a little longer than the videos and not as fast paced, but I hope it's still helpful. Okay, so this problem, 
we're working with yield to maturity. So a firm's bond has a maturity of eight years. So, um, and it's going to be called eight with $1,000 face value. Um, so that's just, I believe another way you could just put it FV again. Okay. Mm. Okay. That does make it a little more complicated. Cool. I remember this. Um, 11% semi-annual. So Okay, 11%, so we just said this, um, we're going to multiply this, um, let's see what we're solving for. What should investors expect to earn on these bonds? Okay, so for this one, um, our payments are going to be 1, 2, and then we'll fix that number in a sec. And then this is interesting. So they're callable in four years. So this problem is kind of a two-parter. It's asking us to find yield to maturity and yield to call, which is interesting. Okay. Sorry, it's taking me a minute to set up. Okay, so numbers for yield to maturity are going to be kind of what they gave us. So we can put this N as eight. They're callable in four years. So... I'm going to say, and then um, in four years, the, um, let me see, okay, in four years, the um, future value is going to equal this, and then present value is going to equal this. And it's not always that present value is more. This um, would be, I believe, the bond selling at a premium because it's selling for more than $1,000. But if it sold for less than $1,000, then it would be, would be a discount. Um, and $1,000 is always going to stay the same for corporate bonds. So you could just assume that. Let, let's move this down. Um, okay, continuing. So N equals 4. That's semi-annual, so we'll have to change that. And then... Um, Payment, 110. Okay, let's edit those numbers a little. So we're going to make this um, eight actually, and then the other one will be 16. This we're gonna make 55, I believe. And we can enter those numbers. Sorry, that took a minute. Okay. So this is our yield to call. So we can go 1154 future value, um, 128. 3.09, then make it negative, present value, 8 to N, 55 payment, and then we're going to get I. And then this number we're actually going to have to multiply by 2. Remember how we divided by 2? We're going to go 2 times. There we go. Yield to call equals 6.32%. Awesome. Okay, yield to maturity. So this is a little bit simpler in my opinion. We're going to be using these numbers. So we're going to multiply n by 2. So that's going to be 16 because we're waiting it for it to mature all eight years. And then this one, it was assuming we call it after four years. So 16 equals n. And then our um, for yield to maturity, this is going to stay the same. Um, that's what we're finding. This is going to be 55 again present value, um, we're being told it's about 1200 and nine cents. Cool, cool. We're going to input those numbers. So 55 payments, 1000 future value, 1283.09 negative present value, 16 N and then I. And then times two. Awesome. Okay, so that's the answer to A. Um, let's see. So that's our yield to maturity, yield to call. And then it's asking us what should um, investors expect? 
will happen. I believe it'll be, yeah, yield to call because it's less, so the bonds will be called because um, the investors aren't going to want to pay more than they have to. Um, so you can expect that this will be the yield that you're going to receive if you're an investor. Okay, our next problem. We got five up in here. Okay, so five. An investor has two bonds in his portfolio that have a face value of $1,000 and pay 11% annual coupon. Bond L matures in 12 years while bond S matures in one year. Interesting, okay. So let's just do it on both sides. So bond L and bond S. So we've been told um, they both have a face value of $1,000. Let's see if this can work. Huh. <laughs> okay, that's fun. Um, they both pay an 11% annual coupon. I don't know, I think this would be a little quicker. Damn it. Equals. So it's times 0.11. Okay, bond L matures in 12 years, so N equals 12, N equals 1, this is a quick bond, cool. Um, what will the value of each bond be if the going interest rate is 6%, 8%, and 12%? Assume that only one more interest payment is to be made on bond S at its maturity, and that 12 more, okay, yeah, that's assumed. So we're going to basically find the... For interest rates of six, eight, and twelve. Okay, watch this. You guys are gonna love this. This is with this financial calculator, it's super easy to just change and re input the numbers. So let's start with bond L. We have one thousand dollars face value. Then payment, 110, then 12 for N, then 6I first, so present value. Don't mind the negative. Okay, cool. Give me one second, I wanna make sure I'm getting this right for y'all. Okay, we're just going with this. I think this is right, but I don't have the answers right here, so just double check it. Six uh, percent, that's gonna be. And all you have to do is go eight to I, and then nice. And then we'll go. Okay, now for this one, all you have to do is change 1 N, and then let's go 6 to I, present value. Okay, let's go. Nice. Now it's asking, why does the longer term bond's price vary more than the price of the shorter term bond um, when interest rate change? So let's see. Oh, I believe the answer to this was there's more time for it to fluctuate, but let's see. I'll just go into the next one. I don't want to spend too much time on conceptual questions. Okay.
next we have an investor has two bonds in her portfolio bond C and bond Z okay we're gonna do similar bond C and bond Z each bond matures in four years has a face value of $1,000. Okay, has a yield to maturity of 8.2%. Okay, bond C pays an annual coupon rate of 11.5. So, Bond Z has um, zero coupon. Wow, interesting. Okay. So, assuming that the yield to maturity of each bond remains at 8.2, 8.2, um, over the next four years, calculate the price of the bonds at each of the following years. So, we need to, <laughs> this table, this is going to be... A little bit of a doozy. We're gonna fill this whole thing out. So, let's see. Year, let's do it here. Year four, year three, year two, year one, year zero. Let's do it for C first on C. Okay, here's how it's gonna work. We're going to put 4N1000, future value, um, 8.2 into our I, 115 payments, and then FV. Okay, and then all we have to do is for year 3, just go 3N1000. Awesome. It's so satisfying. I love it. Okay. Then for year two. And again, we're ignoring the negatives because it just means money going out. Year two. So, oops, sorry. And then for this one, we know already that it's a thousand because it would mature at year zero, but let's just put it in here just to confirm. Zero N, present value, $1,000. Awesome. Okay, cool. Now for this one, we basically do the same, but we know that payments are zero. So here we're gonna go four to n one thousand future value eight point two i zero payment present value nice so let's go three n present value. Go two n present value. Cool. Okay, and they want a plot, like either plot it on a graph, but it's pretty easy. This one um, is selling at a discount. Then this one is selling at premium, so it's basically going to look like this. I mean, sorry. Okay. 
Okay. We have another graph one. Cool. I do actually like these. Um, this is our next problem. rate sensitivity. An investor purchased the following five bonds. Each bond has a par value of $1,000. We'll write that. Oh, wait. Okay. 8% yield to maturity. Um, immediately after the investor purchased the item, interest rates fell, and each then had a new um, YTM of 7%. So we're just going to put this down. Immediately, cool. What is the percentage change in price for each bond after the decline of interest rates? Fill in the following table. Okay. So we have our bond. Then we have price at 8%, price at 7%, and then percentage change. Okay. Then we're just given different bonds. This is super fun. Nice. Okay, bond number one. We're told 10 years, so N, N equals 10. And then we're told it's an annual coupon of 10%. So payment equals um, 100. Next, we have 10 years, zero, zero coupon payment. Okay, we have five years zero. Thirty years zero. And finally, um a hundred dollars per perpetuity, which that means um you'll get a a hundred dollars um end endlessly. There's no N. Okay, so we're gonna get back on our, our magical financial calculator. Oh, this is what it says up top. There you go. And let's do the first one. We have $1,000. And then, ooh, this is tricky. The price fell from eight to 7%. So we're first we're gonna find the price at 8%, then 7%. So we're gonna go, let's make sure you all can see it. Eight for I, 10 for N, 100 payment present value. I'm just gonna write all these in black. One, one, four, point two. And then all you have to do is change the I to seven. So we're gonna go seven I present value. Okay. And then we'll calculate all, actually no, it's, it's good to calculate it right now. So we're gonna go, oh, okay, this is awesome. I'm gonna show you how to store value in this calculator. Um, so we're gonna divide this by this. Um, right now we can just, we can just do it the way that we want to do it for the future, but we can go change it to positive, and then enter. So now this is in the calculator, and then we're gonna go, It's Polish notation, so it's divided like a little differently, but all you would do is you get this number and then, sorry, it's not divided differently. I'm just like entering the numbers in a different order, but you get the point. Divide this by this, 
subtract it by one and then multiply by 100. Okay. So let me write this formula for you all. So, um, we can get a 7% divided by 8%. So the PV at 7%. And then we're going to subtract 1 times 100, and that'll give us that column. Okay, let's go to our next one. So for this one, we have 10 and um, 1,000, zero payment, 8i present value. Okay, here's what we're going to do. So we don't have to like retype it. We can get the long decimals. So we're going to change this to positive. We're going to go store in one. So now we can recall one to do a quick division. Then for 8%. Oh no, we just did 8. Sorry. 7%. Okay, here's what's cool. You can go enter, recall one, divide. Oh, look how nice that was. Nice. Next we have n equals five, zero payments, 1,000, future value, eight, I P V. And then let's store it in four just for fun, because now we can um, do different, you can do any number. Seven I. Enter, recall four divided by one minus 100 times. Nice. Okay. Then let's clear it. 30 N zero payments, $1,000 future value, AI present value. Oh, only $99, okay. That's still all right. Seven and Oh, that makes sense because it's over a longer period of time. Ah, I forgot to store it again. It's all right. Oh. One minus 100 times, sorry. It looks like a percentage, but just cause this one's extra high. So this is 32%, that's pretty, that's pretty wild. Okay, and now this last one, you might be like, what do we do? It's pretty easy. So you just take our payments, which is $100. Um, divided by our I, so 0.08. 100 by 0.07, so that is going to be this number, this is going to give us 0.07. And we're going to do the same, you should be getting these numbers, just making it quick for y'all. There we go. I'll move for a sec so y'all can see, and let's go on to our next problem. be a faster way to erase this maybe like a big thing i'll get it for the next video y'all don't worry <laughs> okay this is yield to call for number eight okay seven years ago oh right away this is a tricky one okay so we're gonna make a timeline for this i like to do that 
So seven years ago, a company issued a 20 year bond. So um, we'll say N equals 20 here. And then seven years ago, so now at year seven, N will equal 14. Cool. Um, with an 11% annual coupon rate, so and then $1,000 par value. Bond has a 7.5% call premium, okay, with five years of call protection. Today, Templeton called the bonds, compute the realized rate of return for an investor who purchased the bonds when they're issued and then call, held them until they were called. Cool. So for this one, we need our realized rate of return. So let's see, we're gonna go, N is actually gonna equal seven because um, we're gonna, I believe, let me just calculate it and make sure it's right, but I think it'll be seven because we're trying to find um, when a person held their bonds till they were called. So you're not gonna buy them here. So this will actually be the period of time. So N will equal seven. And $1,000, this will actually equal our present value, so we'll make that negative, because we're trying to find the future value. And then, oh no, we're given our future value, I believe. Let me see. Sorry, give me one sec. Okay, cool. So we can find our future value, because 7.5% um, call premium, what you're going to do is times 1,000, times 1.075, you'll see where we got that. And that's gonna give us um, this number. And so that's gonna be our future value because we're gonna get that when they're called, I believe. Um, yeah, let me just enter those numbers for I. Okay, so we're gonna go 110 for our payments. Sorry, I don't know if I press that. 110 payments, 1075, future value, 1000, negative, present value, 7N, what is our I? Okay, cool. I think that's how you do it. Okay, 11.75. Is our eye? Let me see if we can get the answer key real quick. Sorry about this delay. Oh, here we go. Okay, cool. That's right. Nice. Okay, that's all you had to do. It's just a little tricky with this um, call premium, but there we go. Ah! <laughs> okay. Next, we're on to number nine. Okay, so this is about yield to maturity. Um, a corporation has bonds that have seven years left to, no, six years left to maturity. Uh, interest is paid annually, and the bonds have a $1,000 par value and a coupon rate of 10%. Cool. Um, what is the yield to maturity? at the current market price of, okay, so we're given, we're trying to find I, and we're given two examples, so we have A, or one and two, and we're told our present value, okay, this is cool, so they want us to do an example selling at a discount, which is this one, and then selling at a premium, so, And then we're going to make both negative for our calculator. Let's find those values. So we have $1,000 future value. 
8, 65, negative, present value, 100, payment, 6, and what is our I? Cool. Um, 13.42%. Uh, for this one, we can just input um, a different number for present value. So 1166, negative, present value, I. Cool. And then what else are they asking? That's for A. And then for B, um, would you pay $865 for each bond if you thought that a fair market interest rate for such bonds, if it was 12%, that is if RD equals 12%. Um, what is this asking? Let's see. So, Okay, cool. So the answer is yes, because at the price of $865, the yield to maturity, as we just calculated, is 13.42%, and 12% um, is greater than your required. Okay, 12% is greater than your required rate. And then just for fun, um, we can also find, you know, the lowest price. I mean, the high, um, yeah, we can find the highest price you'd be willing to pay for this bond. Uh, I won't do this because it's not asking it, but you can just put 12% instead of this, and then solve for our present value. Nice. Okay, next is 10. We're more than halfway done, y'all. That's great. A corporation, and I always don't read the corporations because I'm just like, we don't need that info, but Pez, Pelzer Printing Inc. has bonds outstanding with nine years left to maturity. The bonds have a 9% annual coupon rate. And were issued one year ago with their par value of $1,000. Okay, so that one year ago is going to trip us up. However, due to changes in interest rates, the bond's market price has fallen to... Capital gains yield last year was negative... 8.97%. What is the yield to maturity? So for this, we can keep, right now, for yield to maturity, we can keep, let me put it in blue. One, two, um, three, and we're gonna go four. So nine, N ninety payment one thousand future value not negative present value I oh okay that's right okay now it's asking for the coming year what are the expected current and capital gains yield it says hint. Refer to footnote six for the definition. Oh, okay. Um, our capital gains yield. Let's do that first. So, oh wait, it's asking for capital gains and current gains. So, let me make sure I'm doing this right before I tell y'all. Oh, this has been a long video. I'm sorry. Thanks, y'all. Okay, so for our current gains yield, we can just take the payment. That's 
fine. You can take our payment, so that's 90, and divide it by present value here. And that should give us... And then for a capital gains yield, all you have to do is take this number minus this number, and that should give you 0.071%. Because um, this is the capital gains yield last year, and so now this is for this year. Cool. Sorry, I keep saying cool. I don't know why. I don't even ever say that, but it's, it's pretty cool stuff. <laughs> okay. 11. The problems are getting a little longer, so I'm going to go a little quicker and not say out everything. But last year, this corporation issued a 10-year, 13% semi-annual. So. This is where my quick math comes in. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's, that's 65. Am I getting that right? Check me all. Um, then we have par value thousand dollars, and then currently the bond can be called in six years. Okay, so n equals. Mm, that's not that's not exactly right. N does won't equal six here. This one is really tricky. Well, I'll make this the last one, and then I'll do a part two. So, currently the bond can be called in six years. So let's make a timeline. 10 year bond. So I'm just going to put 10 here. Currently, the bond can be called in six years at a price of, and it sells for currently, and then our future value will be $1,000. And so, what are the bonds nominal yield to maturity and nominal yield to call? Would an investor be likely to earn yield to maturity or yield to call? So, let's do yield to maturity over here. Um, last year, okay, RN, right now. So, right now, for a yield to maturity, it's going to be, instead of 10 years, we're going to subtract 1. So it's going to be nine years, n equals nine, and then because it's semi-annually, we're going to do it times two. And then our payments, we already did that quick math. It wasn't too quick for me, but we already did that math. Then future value, $1,000. Um, we're told, what are we trying to find? Okay, yield to maturity. So our present value right here is, oh sorry, I thought this, I thought we were at year zero, so our present value, okay, uh, you guys get to how to answer, enter into a calculator, so I'll just tell you the answer, should be 4.81 and then times 2, And then our yield to maturity, we're going to go, um, where is it? Let me see. Okay, so, wait, yield to call. Okay, so for the yield to call, N is going to equal, where is it? Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so oh, this is so tricky. I'm gonna have to uh, check with my professor because on the textbook it says our n is twelve, so that would mean um, n would be six times two. But we just took off a year. Oh, that's so difficult. I'm glad I'm stopping after this one, but we're just going to do it how the textbook says for now. 
I low-key think it should be five because if it's callable in six years and we're right here, then six minus one would be five, so it'd be 10. Oh my goodness, I'll put in the comments. I'll put in the comments the right answer. Okay, cool. So n is gonna equal 12 for now. Uh, present value, I guess that does, ah, because our present value is negative. Then we have our, um, let's see. Future value, thousand. And then payments. And that should give you Can you see that? Okay, cool. Um, those are our two rates. This is our yield to call right here, yield to maturity right here. And now it's asking, what is the expected capital gains or loss? Oh wait, no, we skipped one. What is the current yield? So to find current yield, we're gonna do um, our payment. So 130, our annual payment, so this one you don't have to divide by two, and then we're going to divide it by present value, so this is going to equal point, and then times that by 100, or multiply by 100, equals current yield, and then what is the expected capital gains or loss for the coming year? Is this yield dependent on whether the bond is expected to be called? Um, let's see. Capital gains. I'm just going to erase this stuff in the middle. If you've been following, you'll have it. So we're cool. Um, if it's called, you would do this number. So, I mean, if it's not called, because yield to maturity is not called. So we're going to do 90 minus what we just found. So I'm going to put not call here. And that should equal negative 1.2. Okay, and so the bond is likely to be called and investors are likely to earn, um, since it'll be called, it'll be 9.39%. Cool. So bond's selling at a premium. Okay, we have only seven more questions, but they're pretty long, so I'm gonna stop it here because it's almost an hour and it's getting dark outside. Um, but yeah, this one is so tricky. I'll put it in the comments. Uh, I hope this video was helpful and good luck on the test.